No, I, I can't sit. I'm good. If I got this tool belt on, I'm not going to be able to pull that off. But I'll lean on the chair. <laughs> That's good. Thank you very much. Here's what you got. Uh, this is an 11 year old building. It's built in 2005. So your roof is 11. I anticipate five to seven, six to eight more years of the roof shingles mm -hmm. uh, being pretty good until you have to change them. Mm -hmm. And that means you may have, as you come up on that five year or six or seven years, as you face each repair, if something happens, the more likely you are to hear a roofing person say, we probably should put new shingles on. Now, sometimes what happens is the roof does really good and it may last 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 years, which is unusual, but does happen. Mm -hmm. When that happens, you can count on your insurance company to bring it to your attention. Hey, your roof is 19 years old. You know, we may not renew your policy because of it. So when I give a life expectancy, I'm taking all of this into consideration to help you and, and inform you. Mm -hmm. That means that I think the life expectancy is probably about six years, give or take. But I do believe as you approach the 20 year mark, you start to get scrutinized more from your insurance company and the roofers that look at the materials, the more, the more likely they are to say, we probably shouldn't even bother repairing this. Okay, so you should budget in that time frame for a roof replacement. Mm -hmm. And roof replacement means shingles, not the wood. Okay. okay, now when I went into the attic space, the wood looks really good. Uh, one of the things people don't do is they don't marry those two things. When you hear somebody say you have to replace a roof, they picture the whole roof coming off balance. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Usually it's just the roof covering, the thing that protects the materials from water. Mm -hmm. The wood itself, the framing, the truss, and everything that's visible in the attic looks very good. I don't think you've ever had any real leaking problems here. Now that doesn't mean you haven't had minor leaking problems, because I think you have. There's a stain above the breakfast nook at the ceiling. It's dry right now. But when you look at your back uh, wall from your patio, mm -hmm. you see that little roof that's over that section where it meets the wall. That's probably where the water got in before. Mm -hmm. There are also some things on the roof that need maintenance now. Things like nail penetrations that need to be sealed, some end caps on a ridge, on two ridge vents that need to be replaced. This will be described in your report better, okay? But for your knowledge, it's a maintenance step. You need to do this maintenance to prevent problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see any active problems right now, but I do think if you ignore the recommendations that you could have water come in, not in a bad way, just you might notice a stain somewhere and you'll say, well, why did that happen? Mm -hmm. So when I look at a house for you, I'm looking for things like that to stop those things from happening if we can. Sure. Okay, so any questions on the roof? Mm -hmm. No. Good. good, okay. Structurally, it's pretty good. It's a concrete building. It, it's probably poured concrete on the first level. Now, I had no access physically to confirm that, but what makes me think that is in the garage, you can see the actual precast, what looks like precast walls, uh -huh. okay? So I'm guessing that the whole first bottom, of the first floor bottom is concrete. Okay. Not block, but precast. Okay. The second story is wood. The materials are covered with stucco, mm. and one of the things that's very common with stucco is it cracks. So as you walk around the building, you're going to see cracks, like in this corner here, by the windows there, on the back wall, second story, uh, on this wall over here. So when you see that I have in there minor, set minor settlement cracks were observed at all sides of the building at both stories, that's what that means. They're minor because they're not major cracks. They're important because they're open and they will allow water to come in in certain conditions. So what do you do? If you plan on painting the building, that's the best step. If you can't afford to paint or you're not going to plan to paint in the first few years, then you have to have somebody or yourself seal up all those cracks to prevent water from coming in. Okay, you'll so we don't end up with an issue like the last house. Yeah, so it's important that you pay attention to those things now before you have any real bad problems inside. I have noticed not just the water that came in at the breakfast ceiling, the breakfast, breakfast nook ceiling, Water has come in here before at the dining room window. It's also come in at the living room wall, but not in a way where it seems to cause a lot of damage. In other words, there's no rot at the trim. The car, you'll see, you notice the carpet was pulled up a little bit over there. I did that. Um, I did that to look at the strip for the carpet, and it is discolored, but it's not rotted. If you have a long-term problem over a period of time and you pull that up and it's breaking apart in pieces because the water damage is that significant, that means that's a long-term problem and we may have some other issues. 
Here we have evidence that water will get in because the conditions outside say that, mm -hmm. and inside we have evidence that it has done it in the past, so it's time to do, to do what we're recommending, take care of the cracks. Another thing you can do also, if you drive around any neighborhood, you won't see gutters on the building. Okay, that's, that's pretty normal in Florida. Doesn't make it right, it's just normal. So that means that if you can control the water coming down and falling so close to the wall, the foundation, that's gonna improve the odds against water coming in too. So painting, sealing cracks, controlling drainage is really important. Okay, any questions on that? Uh, sealing the, the crack in the wall. What do you, what do you use? Or? Well, they, they have different uh, materials, but the most commonly used one is an exterior silicone seal. Um, it, you want to get something clear if you're not going to paint so that it's not a big eyesore because uh, otherwise it won't match color wise. If you get clear, you'll still see the crack, but it will be sealed. Um, and if you're going to paint, you can use anything you want for exterior use. And then we rec would recommend like getting a good quality paint, like something high quality that will last a while. You, you don't want to just throw a coat of paint on and throw a coat of paint on and three years later you're back where you started, right? So that's the recommendation for those problems. Now also, a house being 11 years old, you would not expect them to have replaced anything, the roof, the water heater, the air condition, or anything, because essentially everything is still in the midway of its life. So I would budget for replacing things with a reserve and replacement maybe over the next five to six years to be prepared, because they're, they're at an age where at this point in time, with each person that visits you for a service call, they may say, have you considered replacing this? And at, Right now, it may not make sense, but two years from now, three years from now, it may start to make sense depending upon what it is they're fixing. Okay, so right now, everything is working as it should, and everything is in, in fair condition as you would expect it to be. Mm -hmm. um, the water heater is a 50 gallon uh, tank, and it's made by Rheem. Rheem is a good brand. And it's working just fine. I got hot water everywhere in the house. The plumbing is uh, PVC and CPVC. Those are good materials. What's really good about them, and like I'm, I said in the beginning, I'm going to talk to you like you don't know anything. Okay, that's why this is so long. Um, CPVC and PVC are very easy to work with. So like once you are a homeowner, you're going to start to do some things on your own once in a while if you haven't already done them in the past. You can get PVC cutters, glue, and primer and fix just about any leak that you'll have in the house. Okay, and it's really a process of about 20 minutes to repair it, 20 minutes or less. The hardest part is where the problem is. If it's accessible, you don't have to break a wall, no problem. If it's in a wall or somewhere, you have to make a hole, but it's an easy fix. Okay, that's the advantage of that material. Uh, you're on a public sewer system here, which basically means worry-free for you. You're going to just pay for wastewater and you're going to pay for your incoming water. The water pressure in the house was 55 pounds per square inch. That's good. Okay. Uh, air conditioning unit. This is where we need a little bit of immediate attention. It's working, cooling and heating fine, but it's got coils that are very dirty right now. And the air handling cabinet on the inside, there is some organic growth and mold on the inside. So you want to clean that up so that when you're living here, those things aren't traveling through your air system. Okay. The performance is fine, it's just they haven't had it cleaned in a while and the filter has not been replaced in a while. So you need cleaning, not replacing? Not replacing, cleaning right now. Okay. Yeah, and we're gonna recommend, my job is to tell you where you need a professional. And in this case, the air conditioning, you need a professional for a couple of items and I'll have them itemized in your report. Okay. Okay, so that you can tell your air conditioning person what your inspector was concerned about. Okay. okay. But uh, as a whole, it's performing fine. The brand is Hempstar. That's a pretty popular brand. I think it's made by the same company as Carrier, Bryant, Payne, and so on. International Comfort Products. Um, from what I hear, the advantage of having them is the parts are easy to get. So like, if you call someone, if it breaks down, you won't have to be out of, without an air conditioner for very long. They can fix it quick. And in Florida, that's a big deal. You don't want that to happen in August, although Murphy's Law says it will happen in August, right? All right, so your air conditioning system, your plumbing, your electrical, that checked out the best of everything really because you really don't have much going on here. And you have 200 amp service coming in. There's a main breaker on the left side of the building. 
Okay, walk around that side of the house. You open up the box, there's a breaker, you shut it off, all the power inside will go off. That's important in case you want to like maybe put a new fixture somewhere. Okay, that way you don't electrocute yourself or have someone get hurt. Um, the equipment in the house is all Square D, which is a good brand, and there's no problems with any of the major electrical. I do have three items um, we're going to recommend for repair, but they're small. Uh, one of them is the smoke detectors are on, on an arc fault circuit, which was a change that happened just before this house was built, so it might have been an oversight. Also, each municipality, they, they only implement the national electrical uh, requirements at different times when they see fit. So it's possible that maybe we're in Polk County and Polk County didn't have that as a requirement yet. So when you read that, understand that's just because the NEC says it should be our fault protected. It may not have been required to be. So it should just prompt you to research a little more about what our fault protection is and see if it's something you desire to have done or not. Okay. Um, there's a GFI outlet to the left of the kitchen sink that's not working. Those things cost about $15, $16, and if you have an electrician do it, it's probably gonna cost you about 150 bucks to have them just swap it out for you. Um, if you wanted to try it on your own, I don't recommend it unless you feel comfortable. So it depends on the person, or if you have a family member, whatever you choose. Okay. Right? Yeah, uh, one, one outlet, one outlet. Well, what it is, is it's a GFI, so it has a reset in the middle. It's one of those outlets with a reset. Uh, and it is connected to the one on the other side of the sink and the one on the back side of the sink here in the living room. Uh, so there's no power in any of those three because of that one. Okay, so when you replace that one, you'll get power restored to the other two. That's how they wire them. I think. Um, I think overall, everything inspected pretty well. If you would call me on the way here and said, what would you expect to find? You always find a GFI that doesn't work in every inspection. Almost always. You almost always find stucco cracks, houses that don't have gutters, minor previous water penetration for one reason or another, it happens all the time. A roof with a little bit of history, like yours does, with the leak here at the breakfast nook. So I didn't come across any surprises. And if you want an example about what a surprise would be, a surprise would be coming in the house and finding a lot of corrosion, corrosion at like plumbing materials and maybe electrical, and all of a sudden we suspect you have reactive drywall or contaminated drywall. That would be a surprise. Okay, now rest assured, I looked at your coils, your electrical wires and the panels, and all the plumbing, and there doesn't seem to be any reason of that to be concerned about. So there was no real, no real surprise here. Okay, so I think that overall, I mean, it's a house that needs some maintenance, but it's a nice house. Good. Yeah. Now I even did check out the pool in the general scope. It looks good. The pool lights work. The pool heater works. Uh, control panel works. Jacuzzi, most important, works. I ran these sprinklers too. They all work as well. They just need a little service because some of the sprinklers are wetting areas they're not supposed to. Uh -huh. You know, like you know when you turn one of the zones on and you hit your neighbor across the street, well, <laughs> probably should redirect the head. And then I scared this guy's wife because when I turned on one of the zones, apparently it, it wet her in the oh. screen room. So 